Really? What does it mean for me to have victory as I go through the journey of life? And whether you're quite young or you're middle-aged or you're a little bit farther along in life, it's still a very, very important question. The scripture that was read tonight reveals to us the most important victory ever, ever in recorded history. And we gather on this Easter Sunday evening to remember this victory, to celebrate this victory, and to come to understand then what does that mean to me right now? Not just what did it mean 2,000 years ago, but what does that mean to me right now? I'd like you to consider with me the nature of the battle that went on for Jesus at the cross and then in the tomb. There are some things, and I can't begin to cover all of that in this message tonight, but there are some things that really stand out that I trust will be helpful to you like they've been helpful to me. Uh, and I want you to think about the nature of this battle first in terms of light against darkness. We heard there in Matthew chapter 27, verse 45, from the sixth hour until the ninth hour, darkness came over all the land. Say about nine in the morning till about noon. It was just dark. Now, science has looked uh, at this from a lot of different angles, and historians have looked at this from a lot of different angles, and there's a lot of certainty that it was not a solar eclipse. And there's a lot of certainty that this was a supernatural event because it was completely dark at the time of day. It should not be completely dark. But what I am certain of and what I want to share with you tonight is one of the things that separates us from God is darkness. Not being able to see the truth, not being able to see who God really is. And darkness keeps us from seeing things, doesn't it? Have you ever stumbled in the dark? I have. And then I realized I should have had the light on, right? Because I think I know where I'm going, but I really don't know where I'm going when it's dark. And there's a lot of danger in that. And we all know that. And the reality was Jesus did not deserve to die on the cross. He was not guilty of sin, but he took his sin upon us and therefore, he had to deal with the reality of darkness which separated him from his Father. One of the things he cried from the cross is, My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? He was cut off, the prophets say, from the land of the living. He was lost in the darkness. Now, sadly... At least to some degree, we can all relate to that because we wrestle with darkness in our lives, even when the lights are on. And the reality is darkness comes in many different ways into our lives to distort things and to confuse us and to cause us all kinds of difficulties and most of all, to separate us from the love of God. If you ever wake up someday and you think God doesn't love you, you're in darkness. If you think God isn't paying attention to you, you are in darkness, spiritual darkness. You can't see the truth. The truth is God loves you every day, all day, 24 hours a day. But darkness can, can just cause us not to be able to see that or to receive that. The nature of the battle is light against darkness. It separates us from God. It separated even Jesus from his heavenly Father. But light, the light of God, can overcome darkness. When the women went to the tomb, we heard that read tonight, Matthew 28, verse 3, they met angels, and they said the light was so bright that it was blinding. They say the appearance was like lightning, and their clothes were white as snow. John records in his gospel, 
during Jesus' ministry. In chapter 8 of John's Gospel, verse 12, when Jesus spoke to the people, he said, I am the light of the world. Whoever follows me will never walk in darkness, but will have the light of life. If I want to overcome darkness in my life, if you want to overcome darkness in your life, there is a way. And the way is to be a true follower of Jesus, to trust him each step, to never let go of his promises. No matter how bad the darkness gets, the light will win. Did you hear that? The light wins over darkness every time. Don't forget that. Another part of the nature of this battle is good against evil. Matthew 27, verse 46. It was about the ninth hour. This is near the time when Jesus is going to die. And he cried out in a loud voice, Eloi, Eloi, lama sabachthani, which means, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? I believe those are the most painful and sad words ever spoken in human history. A loving, good God who had to abandon his only son. Don't know how it gets more sad than that. The sin of mankind was upon him, and it appeared like evil would win. Hundreds of years earlier, the prophet Isaiah spoke about this when he said, He took up our sins, he carried our sorrows, yet we considered him stricken by God, smitten by him, and afflicted. He was pierced for our transgressions, and he was crushed for our iniquities. The punishment that brought us peace was upon him. But Easter morning, good overcomes evil. Don't ever forget that. Don't forget that, people of God. Every day, we hear about the impact of evil. Every day, we witness the impact of evil. Every day that we're on this earth, we know that evil does its damage. Never forget that the wonderful goodness of the Lord Jesus Christ has conquered evil for you each step of the way. You need not lose to evil ever, ever. And then the, the third battle that we see in this passage is the ultimate battle, the battle of life against death. Matthew 27, verse 50, and Jesus cried out again in a loud voice, and he gave up his spirit. Jesus actually dies. And death looked like it won. Remember that. Remember that. Death always looks like it wins. I've done a lot of funerals. Death looks like it wins. That's not true for those who follow Jesus. It's not true. Death wants you to believe that. Death wants you to believe it got in the last, the last shot that it won. That's the way it looked at the cross. Did it not? If we were there today, we would go, that's Death as ugly as it gets, and it would look like death won. But that was not true. That simply was not the case. Matthew 28, verse 6. The women are at the tomb out of respect for Jesus. And they meet the angels, and the angels say, he's not here. He is risen, just as he said. Come and see the place where he lay. The grave could not hold him, and death was defeated. Period. There's no discussion about that. 
There's no debate about that. Don't ever let anybody give you the idea that death wins. It's not true. If you're in Christ, He has promised you this victory with Him. Praise the Lord. Can you say praise the Lord for that? This is the, this is the victory of all victories, the resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ. There is nothing more important than this. This victory uh, establishes a new order. There's significance to this, and I want to share these things with you. Some things happened uh, during both the crucifixion and the resurrection that God wanted to demonstrate there was going to be, uh, out of the significance of this victory, there would be a new order. In Matthew 27, verse 51, we read that along with that earthquake that took place, at that moment the curtain of the temple was torn in two from top to bottom while the earth shook and rocks split. Why is that so important that Matthew records it in his gospel? Well, we need to understand that Old Testament followers of God that came to the temple to worship our holy God had to be guarded against His holiness. And God's presence was represented in a, in a place in the temple where worshipers like you and I would not be allowed to go in because we could not enter into God's holiness in our sin. And so blood sacrifices were offered and uh, only once a year or on special occasions, the high priest would take that blood and bring it in to the Holy of Holies, the place that was veiled off from the rest of the place of worship. Now, that is not our experience because we live in a new order because that has been removed. Why? Because we're better? No, because of what Jesus did. Let's understand that. It's not because we're better than those folks that lived prior to the death and resurrection of Jesus Christ, but it's because God said that barrier can be removed now because the price of sin is paid, and now my presence will be with you. Jesus ushered in His presence into our lives on that day. Boom. Just broke that temple wide open and allowed us to experience the fullness of of his presence. What a glorious and wonderful thing. Born again Christians live in a new order. They do. Even if we don't think about it, even if there's times we don't realize it, we live in that new order. We should never take that for granted. But we are allowed to live in the presence of God, not because of our worth, but because of this victory. It's a blessed thing. Also, there's a new message. Matthew 28, verse 7. The angels instruct these women, go quickly and tell his disciples, he has risen from the dead and he's going ahead of you. You'll see him. I have told you. What a message. A joyful and powerful message. A message of glorious hope. Born again Christians have the greatest message of all to bring. Don't ever think you don't have something important to bring. You do. You have the most important message to bring to this world because not everybody knows this. Not everybody knows this. Not everybody has been open to this. Go and tell. Go tell. I want you to think on this Easter evening. What does that mean in my life? In terms of experiencing Easter and in terms of knowing this glorious truth and in terms of this new message, what does that mean for me? Well, God called me to stand up and be a preacher. But he's called every follower to bring the message. He's called you to bring the message in your own way. Maybe to demonstrate his love 
in ways that others go, what's that about? And they want to know, why do you care? Maybe to approach somebody that everybody else is rejecting and you want to be able to win the opportunity to tell them some good news. But you know. You're on your journey. And you will be given opportunities to bring good news. Don't miss it. Make sure you make every effort to bring that good news because people desperately need good news. We live in a world full of terrible news. Really broke my heart when I heard the news in, this morning in Sri Lanka. And my heart grieves for brothers and sisters in Christ in that place. Several hundred people dead, hundreds more injured because of hatred. That's not the news that Jesus brought. Ever. He said, love one another even as I have loved you. But here's the good part. As sad as that is, the light overcomes the darkness. Believers live in a new order, and that death will not win. It's sad. I grieve it. And we need to pray for our brothers and sisters in Christ for God's peace to be with them. But don't ever believe the forces of evil are winning on that. It's not true. And then lastly, a new life. Jesus ushers in a new order out of this victory, a new life, a life beyond death. John 14, verse 19, he tells his disciples, Before long the world will not see me anymore. He was getting them ready for his departure. But you will see me because I live, you also will live. 2 Corinthians 5, verse 17, the Apostle Paul was inspired to share these words with those who would hear the truth about Jesus. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. The old has gone, the new has come. Born-again Christians have a new life, a brand new life. And it's a life that will never end. Death will appear victorious, but it will not win. We live into a brand new, glorious life. So I find it remarkable, uh, this is certainly true where I live, but I think it's true in most places on this earth that we can get pretty excited about our team winning at a ball game or we're in a contest and we win the contest. And I know that can all be in good fun. But in the seriousness of life, I would like you to think about how are you going to celebrate this victory? How are you going to live out this victory? Because the final score on Easter is... Jesus is victorious. Death is defeated. Say praise God. Praise God. It's true. Now as we journey through life, we're going to continue to deal with the battle. There's going to be the issue of light and darkness. There's going to be the issue of good and evil. There's going to be all these things coming at us day after day. And Jesus is calling us to be those who bring the good news to be those who are a new creation and those who live into this glorious new life. And I don't want you to miss that. I don't want you to miss one minute of that. And I know that so many times in my life I regret I just wasn't paying close enough attention or I was just doubting too much or I just couldn't believe it would happen. But if you keep focused... And what Jesus is calling you to do and the person he's calling you to be, dear people of God, brothers in Christ, sisters in Christ, you will live into victory. You will have a victorious life.
And it doesn't get better than that. That's as good as it gets. And when you feel down and defeated, go back to the gospel accounts. Read again about the darkness and the earth shaking and the veil of the temple torn in two. And remember again, God's promises are true to you every day. Do not be defeated by lies. Live in the truth. Amen? One of the things that I try to focus on more and more in my life is how can I live in that kind of victory so others can see that in me? That's really hard if you have a discouraging day, right? Any of you get discouraged, you don't have to admit it in front of everybody, but discouragement can creep in. All kinds of things can try to steal your victory in Jesus. Be aware of this. Even the worst of days cannot take this victory away. Even the most difficult illness or the sharpest pain cannot take this away. Don't ever forget that. Keep your eyes on Jesus. Remember the gift he's given you, a victorious life. Let's pray together. Lord, uh, Humbly, gratefully, joyfully, we lift up our hearts to you. So very grateful, Lord. So much in wonder, so much in awe that the tomb was empty, that your son had victory over death. And while we can't fully comprehend the wonder of that victory, we pray, Lord, that each step we take through life, each day we get to live, we'll experience in more fullness the joy and the glory of that truth in our lives. And help us together as a community of believers to encourage one another in that walk of faith. Help us to uphold one another. Help us to be those people who love one another, even as Jesus has commanded us. So, Lord God, accept our thanks, our praise, and worship tonight and instill in our hearts this truth, not just today, but forever. We pray in Jesus' name and God's people say, Amen.